Now we're going to solve a system. The way we're going to solve it, I'm only going to do one example here. What uh, you want to do, this is going to be it's a lot of new information, and I strongly recommend you go through the book. I've done each part individually. Now we're going to put it all together. So I'm going to solve this system, turning into a matrix, reducing, and then writing out the uh, solution. And we just looked at how to write out solutions from row reduced echelon form, how to determine how many free variables there are. So we're just going to put everything together now and solve this. Step one, write the matrix. 1, negative 2, 1, 0. 2 thirds, 2 thirds, negative 1, negative 1. Negative 1, 4, 2, 13. Now, if you've written enough matrices, you don't, you find out that making the little corners takes too long. You can just write big parentheses. Totally okay. All right. We want to get row reduce echelon form. So inside your brain, you should be thinking, I'd like it to look something like this. And then eventually you're going to get zero, try to get zeros around it. So we got a one here. So we're going to do, what we're going to do is focus on column one. So focus on one column at a time. I could uh, multiply one by negative two thirds and get rid of that, or I could multiply by three and knock out fractions here. So let's take that step first. Be careful that you do not uh, have a typo here or a righto as you're writing. So we got 2, 2, uh, negative 3, negative 3, negative 1, 4, 2, 13. All right, now we can go negative 2, row 1, plus 1, row 1. So copy row 1 down. And row 2, you better get a 0 here. We're doing negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 2, positive 4, plus 2 is 6, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, minus 3 is minus 5, 0 minus 3, minus 3. We're adding row 1 now, so 1 plus negative 1 is 0. That was the whole point. We should be getting zeros here. That's why we did this. 2, negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 0 plus 13 is 13. Now, column one's good. We're focusing on column two. I need to use one of these and clear it out. I could multiply uh, row three by a half. The only problem is I'm gonna end up with fractions over here. So what I could do instead, use the two, I could just go and knock out the six right away. So I'm gonna go minus three Row 3, that'll give me minus 3 times 2 is negative 6. Knock out the 6 right there. You could get fancy and use the 2 to knock out the 2 and the, uh, well, knock out the 2 up here. I'm going to leave this alone for now. Just get rid of that uh, 6. So we have negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Negative 9 plus negative 5 is negative 14. Oh... Negative 39 minus 3 is negative 42. And 0, 2, 3, 13. So we can swap these rows here. So 14 times 3 is 42. So if I divide by or multiply by negative 1 14th, it would 
look a lot nicer. And now, so I could use this 2 to knock out the negative 2 very easily. Uh, but if I do that, I'll have to worry about that'll change that number, this number will change that one as well. So what I'm going to do instead is use the 1, focus on column 3 now. So we're going to focus on column 3, minus row 3, minus 3, row 3. So I'm going to use negative 3 of these to knock out that, and negative 1 of these to knock out that. And we got 0, 0, so it won't affect anything in column 1 and 2. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative, don't forget about your constants, negative 3 plus 0, negative 3. Uh, here we go. 0, 2, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, plus 13 is 4. Copy last row. Now I can I can take this 2, knock out the negative 2, plus row 2, 1, 0, 0, 4 plus negative 3 is 1, 0, 2, 0, 4, 0, 0, 1, 3. Last up, get that 2 into, uh, to be a 1. I'm multiplying by half now. 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1, 3. All right, this is the uh, perfect row reduce echelon form. There's no free variables. We had three variables. They all got locked down. So we got, originally it was x, y, and z. If you start out with x, y, and z, you don't want to start using x1, x2, x3. So this has the uh, single solution right there. The order you go in is not important. What is important is that you end up with row reduced echelon form and that you did row operations properly. Right here, a reasonable thing to do would have been, instead of this, I could have multiplied by a half right here, gotten down to 102, and then use that one to knock out the negative 2 by multiplying it by a positive 2 and going that way. There's lots of other choices I could have made. I could have left fractions in here if I uh, wanted to mess around with fractions, which I don't. Uh, so I, I didn't do that. I got rid of fractions as soon as I could. Uh, and I used uh, that 2 to knock out the 6 instead of trying to drop into uh, multiplying by a half or multiplying by a sixth. That uh, does not sound very fun. Either way, no matter which path you took, as long as you made correct row operations, you get down to here. Now, to warn you, sometimes uh, it takes a while to get the hang of doing row operations. There are a bunch of problems in the book. They do have the answers in the book. You may want to just peek at the answers and do the, either the, the ones that are either inconsistent or that have answers that are not fractions first. And then don't look at the answers and uh, just look at the answers in so much as skip the ones with fractions. Uh, and then do the ones that don't have fractions first and try to avoid them the way I did here. Uh, when you're done, you can check your answers by plugging in 1, 2, and 3. It needs to satisfy every single equation. So if I plug in 1, 2, 3, it's nice they're all in order. 1 minus 2 times 2 minus 4, that's positive 3 plus 3, or it should be negative 3, plus 3 is 0. And then 1, 2, 3, you can plug them in there. And 1 plus 8, negative 1, plus 8 is 7, plus 6 is 13. And you can plug it into the fraction one also. So plugging in, you generally won't have to do that on web work, because you can always check your, your answer by hitting submit. You don't have to do that when you're doing homework problems from the book, but when you're in your final exam, there's no other way to check your answer.